I'm Steve Fisher. Most actors don't enter the profession wanting to be a star. As do the stars in the universe, those in entertainment also tend to supernova. Character actors, especially really good character actors, tend to keep soaring through the universe, morphing from part to part, often outshining the stars. And they keep working. As do many film buffs, Cullen Dixon recognizes their greatness. My favorite actors have always been character actors. You know, I've always loved movies. When I watch films, I always look for the supporting actors because I feel that the most interesting characters in film are always played by character actors. His new podcast, What a Character, shines a spotlight on those actors, and he's here to talk about them on Life Slices. Who is Colin Dixon? Well, I'm a former production assistant and associate producer who currently hosts the What a Character podcast. It is a podcast where I interview legendary Hollywood character actors about their lives and careers in show business. Awesome. I'm, I'm assuming this is just character actors who are currently alive. Well, some of them I've dug up and interviewed. Uh, really? Yeah. Use that old black magic. <laughs> I talk about guests not giving you an answer to a question. <laughs> You talked about being a production assistant. So did you work on films, TV? I worked on various film and TV projects. I worked on 90 Day Fiance, Floribama, several Lifetime films. At the time, I originally wanted to be a, a film producer, but I just couldn't stand those long, long hours on set. So I decided to work as a podcaster. Yeah, not, not to mention the politics behind the scenes that people don't realize that movie making ain't easy. <laughs> Very true. What drew you to podcasting? What was it about this genre that appealed to you? I love podcasting because it gives me a sense of, it, it allows me to create without having to go through barriers. You know, the problem with the entertainment industry nowadays is that you could have a great idea, you can create something that really works, but the higher ups won't agree with you on what works and what doesn't. With podcasting, you can create something yourself, put it online create your own company and not have anyone tell you, hey, take this out, don't interview this person. You just do whatever you want. So all in all, it's the, it's the freedom aspect of podcasting that that is sort of interesting. Let's talk about your focus here on character actors. What is it that made you choose this focus? My favorite actors have always been character actors. You know, I've always loved movies. When I watch films, I always look for the supporting actors because I feel that the most interesting characters in film are always played by character actors. For example, leading men are always characters that are perfect, the sh white knight in shining armor, if you will, whereas character actors are always play characters that aren't exactly 100% functional. They're always <laughs> a bit off, always idiosyncratic in some way. And that, to me, is always interesting. Take, for example, William H. Macy's performance as Jerry Lundegaard in Fargo. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who's driven to having to make horrible decisions in order to save his career, keep his life going. And that to me is much more interesting than a character who has all of his ducks in a row because of the implications and the and idiosyncrasies that comes along with his actions. And I think you'll find, I'm sure you've gotten this from a lot of actors you've spoken to, is that they prefer the character roles. They are meatier and they're much more fun to play than the leading man or the leading woman. Yeah, m most definitely. I mean, you get to do a lot more things. You get to add more personality quirks that you cannot do in a, in a leading role. Mm -hmm. I worked in TV and film and had a, a chance to meet a lot of these actors. And I always found that the actors who played the heroes on screen were the most miserable people in real life. And it's the ones that played the villains that were the <laughs> nicest. <laughs> right. It's like they get to get all that venom out on screen. They don't have to deal with it in real life. Right. Actors live a very sad, sort of miserable life. And I'm sure you can understand this. You've been an actor. So, yeah, it's a great way of just getting all that energy out and really just expressing themselves in a more honest way. You said earlier that you look for the character actors because they're right. the most interesting. Usually you don't have to look for them because they're stealing the scene. <laughs> well, when I watch the film, I always look forward to seeing them. Like, if I look in the credits and I see, oh, uh, Chris Pratt's in this movie, but then I see Michael Rooker, I'm like, oh, wow, Michael Rooker's in it. And that makes me want to see it even more. How far back does your interest in character act to go? Because I, I love watching the old films from the 30s and 40s, which had some of the best 
character actors around. They were oh, all yeah. in the studio system. They were on contract and they'd just go from film to film. And you had terrific performances that, again, would steal the movie from the stars. I grew up watching old movies, so I have a lot of great appreciation for the o- older character actors. One of them being the great Timothy Carey. I don't, I don't, are you familiar with him at all? Yes. For those in the audience who don't know, Ms., uh, Timothy Carey was a character actor who starred a lot of Stanley Kubrick films. Uh, you may have seen The Killing, Paths of Glory, and other films. He was an interesting guy because he had this very manic acting style. If you watch Nick, actors like Nicolas Cage or Crispin Glover or even Michael Richards from Seinfeld, they all owe a great deal to him. He really created this whole new acting, manic acting style. It's always interesting to watch him because he'll be in a scene with some of the most legendary actors of all time, and he'll steal a scene by doing almost nothing. But the way he does it is is so, as, a, as I'll say, get idiosyncratic and so different that you, you can't keep your eyes off of him. That, to me, is, is great acting. I mean, you can do so much with, with so little. There are so many actors, if you go back through films, it back, especially with the studio system, Mm-hmm. as I said, because actors were under contract, so they'd just hop from film to film. And you see players like Humphrey Bogart and Cary, Cary, well, Cary Grant, but Jimmy Cagney, who are always surrounded by the same character actors and lent so much to the film. When the, you had in the Humphrey Bogart movies, you had Sidney Greenstreet and Peter Laurie. Right. Jimmy Cagney had Frank McHugh. Right. And I always look forward to seeing them because they, you knew they were always there. They could give you a chuckle, but they could also be serious if they had to be. And then it's amazing. I'm sure you know Walter Brennan. Mm-hmm. Well, you of go course. back to his early films in the 30s. He looked exactly the same as he did when he was an old man. <laughs> he started out as an old man. It's funny. You have actors who are young their whole career. Walter was old his whole career. Right. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if he were around today. They wouldn't have to CGI age onto him because it was just always <laughs> there. But making him young might be impossible. <laughs> of course. Mention some of the actors that you've interviewed so far. So far, I've interviewed uh, Lance Henriksen. I interviewed Philip Baker Hall in one of his final interviews before his mm-hmm. passing. I've interviewed Jake Busey, Kathleen Wilhoyt, Robert Davi. And speaking of Timothy Carey, I interviewed his son in a special two-part episode dedicated to, to Timothy. For all you Timothy Carey fans out there, as well as old movie fans who are watching this, you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. You'll learn a lot about Timothy that you did not know. You'll get to see basically the man behind the madness and find out that he really wasn't mad, as as you might think. <laughs> no, most of the time, actors are not what they seem on screen. If you meet him in real life, they're totally different. Even Cary Grant, an interviewer, asked him, you know, that there are a lot of men out there who want to be Cary Grant. And he said, I do, too. (laughs) (laughs) Because it was a total fiction. The the Cary Grant you saw on screen was not what the real man was like. And that's true of a lot of actors. But that, that's what I think is so much fun about doing this show is that you get to interview character actors who are so well known for playing one part mm-hmm. that people think that they're that person in real life because they don't go out in interviews and, and on the red carpet. They're not constantly exposing themselves and showing the audience who they really are. Right. So with my podcast, you get to learn and see who they really are in real life as compared to their on-screen counterparts. How have you gotten these people to appear on your show? Well, as I mentioned before, I worked in the film industry before, uh, made a lot of friends, worked with a lot of people who worked with the guests on my show. So I basically said, hey, you know, this person, could you help me get them on the show? So all all in all, it all comes down to a lot of schmoozing. (laughs) That helps. And and are you planning to do, you did say you you interviewed uh, Timothy Carey's son, are you planning on doing that with a lot of old-time character actors who are no longer with us? It's reaching out to family members to see what they were like behind the scenes. It's something I've considered. The, the thing is, is that a lot of these character actors, you know, they were around in a time before social media and before podcasts and what have you. So there's a lot of older actors who maybe aren't as well known or to, to modern audiences and also whose personal lives aren't as well known. Mm-hmm. To, to modern audiences, it'd be kind of interesting to do episodes based on about, about older character actors who are remembered for the roles, but not so much remembered for who they really were in real life. So mm-hmm. It's something I've considered. Yeah, 
I mean, there are plenty of film historians you could talk to, too, about these people and their contributions. Yeah, definitely. It's always best to have the family members on because who knows them best than their sons or daughters or grandchildren. Yeah, like some some guy who always played these horrific villains and you find out they were the sweetest fathers. Yes. (laughs) What would that be like growing up and seeing your dad who you see on screen is this horrible monster? It's like like Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff was supposedly a super nice guy in in real life. I never had the honor of meeting him. You hear that he was just a sweet guy. He played these horrific characters who were bent on murder and mayhem. Again, (laughs) that's the fun stuff to play. (laughs) Right, right. It's why I love doing the podcast. It's why I quit acting. Because I kept getting the, the boy next door roles, and I wanted to be the villain. And they'd say, "Nah, you look too sweet. You can't. You can't do that." What are some things that you have learned along the way that have surprised you, or that you found especially interesting that you didn't know before you started this journey? What I've learned is that actors. We, we always think of actors as being kind of self-centered and, and arrogant, but. There's a lot of actors out there who, despite their successes, are just really nice, humble people. And they never let the fame. And that's the most interesting thing about character actors is that they don't have all, they're not tempted by fame and, and power as much as leading men. So they're a lot more down to earth than, say, your Tom Cruises or your Brad Pitts. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think that's part of what makes my show so interesting. It shows that even though we see guys like Lance Henriksen and Clancy Brown and Philip Baker Hall on, on movies and television over and over again, at the end of the day, they're just regular, normal people who live regular, normal lives, despite the fact that we see them a million times. Philip Baker Hall, I heard, I don't know, I've never met him, mm-hmm. but I heard that he was totally different off stage than he was in his characters. He always played these tough, mm-hmm. kind of humorless characters, and that he wasn't like that at all in real life. How did you find him? I found them to be a very kind man, very disciplined as well, because you know he's in, in the military. Mm. But I could see his certain personality qualities that he sort of recycled into those roles. You could take a guy who's disciplined and then have him play this super hardened character. It's all about exaggerating that quality or or playing it in a way that seems like they're tougher than what they are. Well, I, I know I've I've heard stories that when he did Seinfeld, that it was the library. Right, detective or, or right. something, and Both that men. they couldn't they couldn't get through scenes because he would he was totally in the character and very straight, but he would crack them up and they couldn't the actors couldn't go on. Jerry Seinfeld would just fall over laughing. Oh yeah, yeah. Philip told me that of all the guest stars that ever guest star on Seinfeld, Jerry found him one of the funniest guest stars on the show ever. He couldn't stop laughing during the audition, and that's what got him the role. Jerry just laughing hysterically. <laughs> I love it. The same thing with, with character actors. They're generally so good that you don't have to really give them direction. You give, give them the script and they make it work, whatever it is, because they bring so much to the role. Yeah, I've seen this on film sets. When you've got really talented actors, you really don't have to give them that much direction. They've got the discipline. They've got the role down. They have the experience. They can remember their lines like that. Yeah, those. When you've got great talent on your hands. It kind of makes your job a lot easier when you're a director. Absolutely. And, and then there are just some actors you can't direct no matter what. <laughs> Very true. As much as you need to and want to, forget it. They're just not moldable. If you could magically connect with any character actor who were no longer with us, who would it be? I would love to interview Dennis Farina. Mm. One of my favorite character actors. I love crime and drama films. And I, I, don't, I feel like of all the character actors who have ever played cops or criminals, he was the most authentic because he, he had been there. And, and also he had a great sense of humor, really funny actor, a real shame that he isn't around today. I see him in films now, and I, you know, I see I watch movies today, and I always, always, I'll look at it and think, oh, well, Dennis could have played that role much better, or oh, he would have been much more believable in, in that role. They, they just don't make actors like him anymore. They don't make actors like a lot of them, the older actors, <laughs> right. anymore. It's unfortunate. Of the character actors around today, who's your dream guest? Gary Oldman, hands down. Gary's always been one of my favorite actors. The fact that he can just slip into a role without going into a, a whole method routine it never ceases to amaze me. Do you watch Slow Horses? 
I, I've heard it's great. I haven't seen it yet. He just steals every scene he's in. He's so good. And you want to follow the cat. He's, he's a nasty character. I mean, he's not the nicest person. Mm-hmm. He's sad and miserable, and he's taking it out on everybody around him. But he's hilarious. And he's, as, as he will quickly say, he's very flatulent. <laughs> Gary can do anything. The, the sad thing is, he says, when this series ends, he might be done with acting. I don't blame them. They, they haven't been putting him in very good movies lately. You, you'll go on like Amazon. And there's always like low budget action movies where he's in for like five minutes, and you, and you watch them, and you think, man, this guy used to be in True Romance, Fifth Element. He played Beethoven. Like, what are they putting him in this for? How do people listen to What a Character? You can find What a Character on YouTube on the What a Character podcast YouTube page. You can also find me on whatever platform you use to download podcasts, such as Spotify, Apple, Deezer iHeart, TuneIn, et cetera, et cetera. I would also suggest for all of you to sign up for my email subscription list. Uh, you can go on the whatacharacterpodcast.com and sign up for that. You will receive updates on shows, and you'll also receive a, a special links to the show in, in, in the email. Of all the character actors that you have interviewed so far, which one surprised you the most in that they were totally different from what you expected? Lance Henriksen, hands down. Lance is, has always played one of the most chilling, most intense roles I, I've ever seen on film. And when I first spoke to him, I was so taken aback by how funny, how kind he was. He's certainly one of the most kindest guests I've ever had on the show. In fact, when we finished the show, he called me two days after the show and, and told and asked me if, if he needed more, more footage of me interviewing him. He was that kind. Yeah. I love hearing stories like that. I remember years ago... I was on the Paramount lot, and I was just walking through the studio, and I see this guy walking toward me. It was a character actor named Morgan Woodward. His face was pockmarked, and and he always played these villains, these just masterful villains and and horrific, and I was scared to death. It was just him (laughs) and me on this street in the studio, and he's walking toward me, and I'm looking, where can I run? I don't know. <laughs> Is he going to try right. to kill me? He gets closer and he gives me this big smile and just, hi, how you doing? I became <laughs> a big fan of his after that. Is there any question that you would like to answer that I haven't asked? Not that I know of. Not that I can think of. <laughs> okay, so who's coming up next? Who have you? Who's your next interview? Well, depending on when you're dropping this episode, I've got Kathleen Wilhoyt coming up. I've got Robert Lasardo coming up. Uh, for those who don't know, Robert Lasardo is the most tattooed character actor in cinema <laughs> history. You've seen him on Nip Tuck. Uh, he was in Clint Eastwood's The Mule. He usually plays Mexican gangsters, even though he's Italian. <laughs> and uh, and I also am in talks with a couple of other people, but I can't divulge too much information on that. When you get to talk to these people, and I'm assuming you do it over Zoom or something like that, how much time do you usually get with them? Usually an hour to 90 minutes. It all depends on what they're up for or or, uh, how busy they are in their schedules. Is the podcast a regular length or is it different depending on the the guest? For the most part, it's an hour. Sometimes it's 90 minutes, but for the most part, 40 minutes to an hour. How many have aired so far? As we're recording this, I have three episodes so up so far, part one and part two with Daniel Roebuck. After that, it's the Romeo Carey interview, which is in two parts. Mm-hmm. And after that, we've got Lance Hendrickson, Peter Dobson, Mitchell Ryan, uh, and, and many others. Mitchell Ryan? Yeah. Is he still around? He passed away a year ago. I interviewed him, I believe, five months before his passing. Yeah, great guy to speak to. Did you have any sense of the shape they were in when you interviewed them? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've watched many of these actors on on screen for years. I've been big fans of their work for years. So, yeah, yeah, I I was I I knew their work very well being a cinephile. But was there any sense their age when you spoke to them? Did you detect that they're kind of old and tired and maybe even ill? To a degree, yes. I, I think Mitchell had some health issues later on in his life. But the amazing thing about interviewing these actors is that despite their old age and their health issues internally they were the same people i mean they still have the same drive to go to work every day and they still have the drive to be creative in in one way or another so that's just something you you kind of you got to respect yes absolutely do you drop these on a weekly basis monthly how often do you drop an episode 
on a weekly basis. Uh, every Monday, you can catch an episode of my show. It usually drops like 8 a.m. in the morning. So if you're up really early at like 6 a.m., you're wondering, hey, where's the show? I just got to wait a couple of hours. We drop our shows hour. It's me. I drop my episodes at 12.05 a.m. on Monday. Oh, really? I don't know why. It's become it's become like my standard. It's like it's posted and it's scheduled, but it's scheduled to drop at 12.05 a.m. every Monday so that when people wake up, they know it's there. <laughs> Not <laughs> that people surprised. are waking up on Monday going, oh, I can't wait to listen to Life Slices, but <laughs> just in case, I want to make sure they're, right. they're ready for it. Colin, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. This has been great, and the show is terrific. Really enjoying it. And for anyone who appreciates character actors, give the show a listen. What a character. All right. Thanks for having me, Steve. It's been a lot of fun. My thanks to Colin Dixon for joining us on Life Slices. If you appreciate those great character actors, subscribe to What a Character. And when you watch a film or TV show, turn off that second screen and pay attention to what's on the first. Focusing on the supporting players will often up your level of enjoyment. If you liked this program, please like Life Slices on social media and subscribe wherever you find fine podcasts. Life Slices is produced by Beatnik Ravens Productions, all rights reserved. Music courtesy of Fesley and Studios. Mm-hmm.